Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a starting steps video slash achievement run for the Amish Paradise achievement. In order to do this, we have started as Mexico, but then released California to play as California, which is going to be the best country to play as in order to get Amish Paradise. Now, this starts probably a little bit better if instead of, you know, playing as Mexico and releasing California straight away, you were to either play as the UK, conquer California and release it, or the United States, conquer California and then release it, because you would have much better laws and also, in addition to having much better laws, you would also have much better tech. But we are going to be trying to do this a little bit of the hard way. Now, this achievement was way easier to get on previous patches because it involves us getting uh, industry banned before 1846. This is the part that's timely. We do have to ban industry relatively early. And then later, any time after this, we have to get average standard of living over 20. Standard living is a lot harder to get up now, and so this will be a little bit of a grind. We are going to stay on one single state in order to do this, um, in order to make this easier because it's easier to raise SOL in this matter. And California in particular, uh, of all the states, is very strong because it has, in addition to having actually a really good bonus, which he, we have logging throughput, this is a very strong bonus early on. Um, we also have a ton of gold that will appear here in California, in addition to having access to a bunch of other resources that will help this out. And so of all the places that will have Dixie culture, this one's probably going to be the easiest. Now, the first thing you do in any run is you ask yourself, hey, do I want to re-roll as a result of uh, wanting to have particular IG ideologies leading my interest groups um, in the game? We, in particular, need Need to go industry banned very quickly in the first 10 years and we're just going to try and do it off the bat and we notice here we have this guy who's a land reformer as the yeoman farmer we can actually roll a ludite who will directly want us to go on from agrarianism to industry banned and so what we will be doing is we will be continuing to restart the game release from mexico and keep doing this until we find a ludite uh, for our rural folk gentleman here so interestingly enough, normally you can't roll a Democrat on someone who's in power, but we can actually apparently roll a Democrat on our landowner IG leader, which is interesting. Uh, but we are also, each one of these uh, re-rolls, we are just going to be exiling this guy, hopefully just to give us another chance. We see re-roll authoritarianism, so we will continue to roll new runs. All right, so we've done 20 or so re-rolls and still haven't gotten a Ludite. The waiting is really low. I didn't realize it was this low. And so we're not going to keep re-rolling. Instead, we're going to go to plan B, which plan B is is that you can go to laissez-faire using uh utilizing uh or sorry you can go to industry band rather utilizing the rural folk if you get onto laissez-faire first so what we are going to have to do is we are going to have to go laissez-faire into uh going uh you know uh industry band and so this is a little bit complicated but i think what we're going to do is we're maybe going to start off with going serfdom and then trying to get a market liberal, and then from the market liberal, trying to get uh, onto uh, laissez-faire, and then from laissez-faire, go back to industry band. Maybe this works. Um, this is a, a little bit of, but the thing is, is we have to do this in 10 years. So we have to do, what is this, four law passes in 10 years? We can also very easily just get census suffrage through, right? This is not gonna be a problem at all because we have specifically, um, We've kind of settled for a Democrat, which is going to allow us to get census suffrage in. Uh, but the census suffrage, do we even really want to use it? Because this is going to mean that we pass laws slower. I'm not sure. I think we're going to lead off with uh, going census suffrage and then go uh, specifically following the census suffrage. We are going to go on to serfdom and then uh, get a market liberal landowner, hopefully, and then go homesteading uh, laissez-faire and then industry ban this is five law passes maybe this is impossible in 10 years we got to do it in 10 years is the really big crux of the problem <sighs> all right we've decided to drop census suffrage because a lot of the law passes we're going to be doing we're going to be doing with our landowners anyways uh and instead we will be going for serfdom into homesteading into uh laissez-faire into industry band and hopefully we can get four law passes done to that end we are going to be floating a whole bunch of authority um but we are going to be using authority for road maintenance encourage resource industries and promote social mobility all in california we only have one state so edicts will be really strong we just want to make sure we maintain a decent 
float. On top of this, we probably won't be building too many construction sectors, if any, because long term it's not going to positively affect us because we're planning on keeping the population low if we can uh, to increase the proportion of guys who are working in the gold fields. And then also we are going to be improving relations with the United States of America. This is very, very, very important uh, because they are going to want our dirt. So uh, by doing this, we are hoping to, um, you know, get in good graces with them and also join again or join with them uh, against Mexico is probably what we're going to do uh, and maybe join their customs union. Of course, we probably don't actually want their migration. So this is a little bit tricky, but I mean, long term, we could always just, um, you know, pass closed borders, which will work for us. So in order to proc the corn laws, we did put in two export routes uh, for grain in order to get to, uh, to the price we wanted and also prioritize export. Now we don't need to do that anymore because we already popped the modern conservative event. So we have our market liberal landowner who will support uh, a change from serfdom to homesteading, but not tenant farmers to homesteading. So this is why we're doing serfdom first. Following this, we'll probably do laissez-faire. And then uh, after laissez-faire, we will do homesteading homesteading and then from homesteading we will go on to banning industry and this is the game plan hopefully this works out uh decently one of the problems with these guys is they tend to die pretty quick uh the guys you get from the corn laws if the guy dies we'll probably just save scum it uh in order to keep him around so that we can ban industry uh and so this is kind of uh what we're going to be doing as far as our construction queue go is going we are not building the most efficient things um, on a per construction basis because we are going to run out of pops really quickly This is not uh, really going to be very important because our deep peasanty phase is going to be three buildings And we're not trying to get more pops and so to that end we are having like kind of a long-term consideration for what exactly our SOL is going to look like because we need to get an SOL to 20 to get this achievement. And so to that end, we're going to first put in a single logging camp. Then we are going to put in a couple other things. But the idea is we're going to have a logging camp, a textile mill, uh, cotton to get the textile stuff, wheat farm eventually. And then the other one we will be wanting is going to be a furniture manufacturing. And then we will probably use trade to uh, manage most of our other stuff. Maybe we build a tooling factory and an iron mine, something like this. Uh, but but the point is, is we are going to be viewing infrastructure as a somewhat limited resource because we only have eight available and gold mines will take up some of it. And so we are going to have to end up building, uh, you know, ports to give us more infrastructure and this type of stuff. And so it is going to be a little bit rough. And so we want to make sure we don't overbuild anything uh, because the infrastructure is going to be so, so little and so valuable. All right. So we are about to pass serfdom. We have very high enactment chance and very high enactment speed. We're getting minus 25% from this authority float. It is intentional. And we're also getting minus 25% from being hyper legitimate. What we're gonna do now is we are going to promote this guy to government and then try and pass uh, homesteading. But what we're gonna do first is we're just gonna wait a tick to see if he agitates for anything. Cause this guy is an agitator. This is what his job is. He's supposed to agitate. Uh, and we see an agitation for restore tenant farmers. This is unfortunate, not exactly what we wanted, uh, but what we will be doing is we will be promoting this guy. To, we will be granting leadership. And instead we will be going for homesteading, which everybody loves. So this should get rid of the movement. Everyone leaves the movement and we will be passing homesteading. Again, absolutely flying. We got the minus five, 50% in acting chance. It's unfortunate we can't go directly to laissez fair but you can't pass laissez-faire if you're on serfdom uh, because what this will do is this will significantly uh, negatively affect the clout of the landowners but that's okay um, we'll still be able to get stuff in it's unfortunate that we couldn't make use of the guy to you know pass census suffrage first but I just feel like we probably don't have enough time to do this maybe we did have enough time uh, but if we're trying to like speed run you know banning industry this is going to be the way we want to do it you can see we're just blasting through we got tick 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 and we get it and we're just gonna get this one because you know streamer luck big nice and so we will be continuing on our merry way with the game plan which is now to get on to laissez-faire which will be a little bit harder to get on but once we get laissez-faire then we will be able to uh just pop a ban on back to industry band or at least the yeoman farmers will support this and you know who will also not care who will just not care at all the landowners once this guy dies so big nice and also uh we haven't exiled anyone so we could just slot him out and exile him at any time we want if we want to get rid of him a little bit faster 
by the way, as far as research goes, we actually started with intensive agriculture. We're going to research this up to 10K, then maybe switch to atmospheric engine, let lathe not finish. But the thing is, is we want to get nitroglycerin earlier because this gives us plus 25% resource discovery chance. So this is the only opener we've ever done uh, where we research intensive agriculture first. All right, this market liberal gentleman, we'll say smell you later to him. We'll put the yeoman farmers in gov because we know we want them in gov. And we'll say goodbye. Your dissenting days are over. And we'll put, instead put, oh my God, we rolled a Democrat. Jesus Christ, we're so lucky. Okay, so we're just going to put the Democrat back in. <laughs> we're so cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to be able to ban industry as quickly as possible. However, we just got this Democrat in. Why don't we just go census suffrage first here? Now that we have this Democrat, man, uber lucky run. Uh, the landowners will love it. They'll lose their negative thing. The yeoman farmers will love it. And once we pass census suffrage, the yeoman farmers will have an enormous amount of clout. And so we will be able to use them to very, very quickly uh, get onto industry band. And then we'll talk a little bit about industry band. All right, so we get census suffrage here, which is gonna be very nice for us. We do now have this guy as president. And so, that's a little bit of a yikes, uh, but we will be able to pass, wow, 44% clout though. Why do you, do you just don't have a party? That kind of sucks. Hmm. I mean, we could just do this, which would be far more legitimate, or this. I mean, I guess we do this. Is there going to be an election here in just a second? Oh, okay, there's an election coming on in. But in the meantime, what we can do is we can pass now industry ban with 44% enactment chance. We also have some internal stuff going on in regards to like what we're doing. We are importing silk and now exporting luxury clothes so we can get the luxury clothes on going. And it... After a little bit of reflection, it seems to be the case that re encourage resource industry is probably not as good. We're going to actually encourage manufacturing industry, which feels tremendously weird considering we're trying to ban industry. Um, but what this will do is it will increase uh, the throughput on these. And our game plan for this is we're going to be exporting the luxuries as much as possible. We're going to put them on export prioritization. And the basic goods we're going to put on import prioritization so no one can keep them. We're going to try and depress the price of the uh, these basic goods as much as possible. And increase the price of these as much as possible so that we can have uh, bifurcated goods where the overall profitability of the building will be high because the overall prices are kind of middling but um, the effect on SOL in particular is going to be good for us because we are exporting um, the goods that are uh, exponential need goods instead of the goods that are used by the basic people so we're just going to export um, we are going to probably need to do new trade routes at some point when we get an interest uh, that overlaps with the United states in fact we can declare an interest i think we'll declare it in dixie the idea being is we will change our trade routes to be trading with the USA because we want to get a trade agreement with the USA because if we get a trade agreement with the USA, they're very unlikely to become belligerent towards us. We're not planning on expanding and so this trade route uh, will allow us to avoid getting annexed you know, by the big bad blue brother. Alright, our first election is in and we're back to being hyper legitimate. Um, the conservative party or the landowners raked back a ton of the clout but we still have a very high you know, enactment chance or uh, as a result of the yeoman farmers being powerful from having homesteading uh, which is going to be kind of our preferable thing um, I mean, I guess we're okay. We do, brother, we don't need to pass this faster. This is fine uh, as it is. Uh, we will be getting it in definitely before, you know, the next seven years because no one opposes this law. So this is going to be tremendous for us. We're going for a tooling workshop now, which is going to hopefully, or this is going to allow us to, you know, uh, put up uh, to a higher level. We just get another one of these. Okay. Well, okay. Fine. Fair enough. Um, but this is going to allow us to turn on these to being... Uh, capitalist owned and I'm actually not even sure we like capitalist ownership to be fair given the goal because the the average SOL will be higher if we are splitting the the payments across uh, you know various other pops and so this is maybe something we want to stay on but sawmills is just so so much better we also see that we're at 10k here so we're going to switch to Atmo engine which I believe we could still make use of uh, even if we're on industry band but we will be getting intensive agriculture after lathe finishes here after lathe finishes here. Is it one more week? It looks like it's one more week. So this is going to be right quick for us. We just got off doing a Ukraine run where we were having to go molasses mode in the late game, but we will go to here. Uh, we will finish this up. Then we will go atmospheric engine. We are, by the way, getting a lot of technology spread uh, as a result of having high literacy. And our literacy is only going to climb currently because we have, you know, some good stuff going on in the fact that we only have one state and we're encouraging, uh, we're encouraging social mobility, which is going to give us an extra 25% education access. All right, here it comes. Industry banned. Big luck. Oh, maybe not so big luck. 
All right, here it comes, big luck, we get industry banned. And this one is interesting. So first of all, the farmers are gonna be super, super powerful. They're gonna be uber caked up and it's probably gonna be the farmer uh, slash we're hoping religious folk show. Um, I do think we're on state religion. I don't think they're very powerful. We might have to use a little bit of a bolster on them, but, but some other stuff we're gonna be getting is minus 10% minimum expected standard living, minus research speed for the production, yikes. This is big, not so sad, not so nice. But the agriculture throughput is gonna be really nice, especially Especially because throughput is the more valuable the fewer the buildings you have. We don't have a lot of buildings, we're doing a relatively small economy, so throughput's gonna be extremely valuable. We can do all the subsidies, but now we also have plus 25% invest aristocrats investment pool contribution. That's not contribution efficiency, that's contribution. So they will be contributing if I understand this correctly, uh, they will be contributing one third of their weekly balance uh, to reinvestment, which is gonna be huge. Now we don't see that. Where's your ownership? It is aristocrat ownership. Why are you not doing a third? Well, it's supposed to do a third. Let's see, cash reserves, ownership, er, okay. Uh, of the dividend, we have this amount and then we have this amount coming in. That's decidedly not a third. Roughly a third? Hmm. So. We'll be back once we do some math. So we did some math, and then we let it, let it think, and then we did some math again, and I have no idea why the reinvestment is roughly one six or like 16%. Um, we assume that 10% is getting taken from them. This means that we are getting a 6% free money modifier, but this is not uh, this is not what industry band is supposedly promises, which is increased aristocrats investment pool contribution, or rather 16% is the contribution. And so what this is doing is it's increasing the contribution by 60%. I don't know why it's increasing it by 60% or, or it's increasing it by a flat 6%, right? Because the normal aristocrats investment pool contribution is 10%. And so this leaves me this leaves me a little bit confused or it's modifying the ones that is uh, the amount that's entering the pool. So, oh, but we have investment pool change. Okay, what's the change? How much is it coming up uh, the investment pool? reinvestment we are getting from the cotton plantations nope it's not positively modifying it so we're, we have we do not have a free money modifier here we are not receiving a free money modifier as a result of industry band it is not increasing the investment pool contribution efficiency it's just increasing the investment pool by roughly i guess it's oh you know what it is it's 35 percent more than no it's not like the math's not mathing my guys I apologize, but the math is apparently not mathing. If you think I've made an error, um, feel free to mention it below, but I have no idea how this is oh, plus 25% in aristocrats investment pool contribution. Yeah, this is just supposed to increase it by a flat 25%, but 25% of, uh, you know, the initial 10%, then we would be getting 12.5%, not 16%. And if it were increasing it flat from 10% to 35%, it would be 35%, not 16%. So I don't know exactly what's going on, but it does re result in an increased contribution uh, from aristocrats specifically, um, which is going to be nice. There's no free money modifier, which is not nice, and we do not receive a free money modifier from our landowners here because we have uh, received, I believe this is the unique uh, landowner modifier uh, from the uh, the USA, where we're getting increased loyalists from standard living increases, which is somewhat nice. We don't really need the money, so it's really not that big, that big a deal for us, um, but we will be, instead of getting uh, a free money modifier here, we will be getting this bonus. The Yeoman's Farmer's bonus is going to be really, really nice. We will probably, now that we don't need to pass laws as quickly as possible, we are going to be bolstering the Evangelicals. Because what we really want is we want a 10% company throughput bonus modifier. This would be really, really nice, specifically on the gold mines. Uh, but also, if we can get other companies going, this will also be nice. For the construction queue, we've built one construction sector, which is why we're starting to lose money. But this will now stimulate, uh, you know, the economy of both the cotton plantations and the logging camps, which will allow them to fully employ very easily because these are what the inputs are for it. So this is kind of what we're doing more so than really needing more construction. We're trying to stimulate these portions of our economy, at least at this juncture. We might not even move up to steel tools because again, we're gonna run out of infrastructure relatively quickly and we're gonna run out of pops relatively quickly. You know, we only have 19K peasants here. And so it's really not uh, too big a concern.
All right, we're actually draining through our money way faster than I thought we would. So I think we're just going to delete this construction sector. Really not too big a deal, um, but it's going to de stimmy all of this stuff. So prices are going to catastrophically drop. But what we can do is we can try and export, uh, in particular, the hardwood. Uh, we're going to export to the, that to the British market. It's better to keep the softwood cheap inside of our market. And we can also try and export the fabric. It uh, looks like we can export that to the British market, which is going to be nice. Uh, and so hopefully we can keep those places employed we do have a bit of bureaucracy to work with here and we're going to be passing consumption-based taxation because currently the the land-based taxation is incredibly regressive if we could get onto prop tax maybe it's worth it but we're not really using too much of our money so going back on a consumption-based taxation really going to positively affect kind of the lower rung pops and really give them a lot more to work with uh, as far as our authority goes we have also tried to we're starting to bolster the trade unionists we'll just see how responsive this is uh, and if they manage to kind of bump up anywheres because we would want them to be demarginalized not expecting this to have much movement unfortunately the evangelicals have zero movement but what i think we need is we need a government building in order to stock it or staff it with evangelicals and so we might uh we have to make a little bit of a consideration what building is going to be most useful to us and i think it's actually going to be the government administration we eventually want to have uh, i don't know if we even have enough tax capacity we do have enough tax capacity so it's not a big deal uh, but i think long term we'll be able to make better use of the bureaucracy then we will the slight uh, increase in the amount of education we're getting and so uh, for this reason uh, I think if we want these guys to demarginalize which we do but we only really want it once they have a company right um, the bonuses here authority not that useful company throughput bonus is what we're about and so I guess we will be waiting on seeing if we can get a company now what we're doing in terms of research <laughs> is we're going for nitroglycerin uh, which is going to be five years so it's gonna be a while uh, but this gives us resource discovery chance we want to find the gold. This is kind of what we care about more than anything else. We see stock exchanges not spreading to us, which is pretty good. Uh, but in terms of what we want over here, we would want eventually corporate charters, which is behind stock exchange. So this is really good. We might peep corporate charters at some point. We are suffering the malice, by the way, because we have industry banned. And this malice seems pretty substantive. And I don't think industry banned is good. But this is where we are. This is the soup we're swimming in. Okay, so it slipped my mind. We actually cannot build fertilizer. <laughs> So this is just stuck in our queue doing nothing. We can't build fertilizer as long as industry is banned. <laughs> and so in order to turn on the fertilizer PM, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to import fertilizer. Um, it's going to be very tempting to close the borders and then join someone's market so that they can supply us with all of the goods that we need for various other things. And so I think what we're going to do is we're going to import fertilizer because it should be plus 75 the instant we, uh, you know... Let the th game think for a second. We're gonna import fertilizer from someone and then we are going to try and think about maybe long-term joining someone's market. Um, but I think what we wanna do before we join someone's market is going to be perhaps, I mean, I'm not even 100% sure, but I think it might be the case that we wanna ban uh, we want to do closed borders. We certainly don't want to let anyone who's discriminated in because they will generally have lower SOLs and we don't want any of that business. All right, there it is. This is how we actually do this achievement. Gold has appeared in California. Uh, since a nice seven stack appeared, I don't even know if we want to go nitroglycerin. I'm pretty tempted to go corporate charters here. And also our trade will benefit quite a lot from getting um, what we are not spreading anyways. I think we're going to go Atmo engine though um, with the idea that eventually we want to do railroads. And once stock exchange finishes we might go corporate charters or we might finish atmospheric engine we're not exactly planning on using it quite yet um, but we could do the iron mines and the sulfur mines at the very least and eventually we're going to want the gold mines and this is going to be really nice but these will employ up right quick and so we will now have tons of money so we will re-add the construction to stimmy the other portions of our economy and so this is going to be pretty good uh, consumption based taxation it looks like it's coming through and we will maybe want to join the British market I think that they will overall be providing the most heavy industry stuff to, for, for us and so this will be very nice for us also decrease bureaucracy costs so now we have more bureaucracy with which to do trade um for us passing the uh you know consumption based taxation also we may be passed prop tax in the future depending on how you know long this run goes but we are going to be looking to increase sol and so now 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 we might be, you know, taking long looks uh, at what this stuff looks like and what the prices for this looks like. Why is grain so expensive? What the hell? 
Okay, well, I guess we're just going to build more grain. We might just put this on auto expand. We'll let the farmers do their farmy thing. Um, but we will be looking to uh, play a little bit of a whack-a-mole with the prices here. We're also going to do the dives workshops. This is going to run an instant shortage. We'll put it on import prioritization, and we will import it from the British, who I think increasingly are just going to be... the. They have silk in their market. They have dyes in their market. Increasingly, they just like look like the best overall market in order to fill the gaps that we have. And we are already doing a pretty large volume of trade with them, so we're going to continue doing that. Let's just come in here and we are going to take a look over here. Uh, we should hopefully see... Okay, so alcohol is expensive. We can import alcohol and the wood. So the furniture is not employing up. And so the question is, why is it not employing up? It's because uh, this is... Well, first of all, we already got laid, so let's do this. Uh, but second of all, this is going to need to export. We're going to need to export the very cheap luxury furniture, which is unfortunate that it's cheap. We would really like it to not be so cheap. I guess we're just going to force export it to the Mexican market, uh, which is not going to be an efficient trade route, but this is going to help our SOL because the other building will employ up more. These buildings will employ up more as things happen. But also, ah, we're out of peasants. So maybe we don't close the borders. Maybe we don't close the borders. I'm still not sure if we're supposed to open, keep the borders open or closed. The thing is, is I just realized everyone's left, well, also that, um, the market access is a bit of a problem. It's not 100% a problem because a lot of our stuff is self-contained, uh, but everyone has left their normal job to go pick gold up off the ground because they're not morons. Well, all right, all right, all right. The trade unions have demarginalized, so this is fantastic. We definitely want, don't want them to marginalize. We're not expecting them to marginalize. It's wild that this is somehow a legitimate looking government with only 21% clout, have, hanging over 40%, but we're gonna continue to bolster them. The workforce ratio, it's going to be really, really key and important for us. We definitely want to get them over 20% clout. Manufacturing uh, industries throughput also going to be super nice to, uh, for us. Oop, that's not what we wanted to do. But another thing is coming on up here, we see that uh, we are starting to run low on bureaucracy. So towards the back of the queue, we are going to put a government administration, which will hopefully allow us to demarginalize, uh, you know, the religious folk as well. All right, so stock exchange is about to finish here. Our market's all really very strange because of reasons. Uh, but once stock exchange finishes, we will switch to corporate charters here. Um, in fact, why don't we just, uh, well, we'll just switch now. That way we can, you know, kind of keep talking about the, oop, we didn't switch. That's not what we did. Uh, we'll switch to corporate charters because we don't have any uh, mines anyways. So getting ammo engine faster is not going to be too, too important. Um, we are keeping an eye on this. We're getting a little bit closer and closer to getting a, a thing. Um, and I think we're just going to, you know, any type of time we have a, a little bit of a thing we're just going to force another trade route here's the problem here's the crux of the issue people don't want to work here people don't want to work here well people do want to work there people don't really want to work here <laughs> they're all just flooding the gold mines which is fine this is fine because it should raise sol pretty well well that's concerning we don't like that we don't like any of that the united states claiming our land but we do have really good relations with them and they are going to have to exile our diplomats if they want to have any chance of uh you know doing anything so that's at least something on our front uh, but we are also just finishing our very first port which is going to be nice i think we maybe just keep it as an anchorage uh for now well actually infras would be pretty nice for us so let's let's sub it over uh we will get a little bit of bump in infrastructure which is not going to be too too useful we'll also we already have a shipyard and so the shipyard will start employing up so that'll be something i guess we'll also probably leave the shipyard on this ownership pm we're probably not going to switch to uh reinforced wooden ships because it's really not as efficient as it ought to be given that it's you know a next level pm uh, it requires a bunch of stuff that's not produced here and the merchant guilds this 500 guys will have better sol overall or better Better contribution to pulling up our SOL. You see our SOL is kind of up here. And so that's kind of the soup we're swimming in. We can kind of try and join their customs union if we gave them an obligation, but we're again keeping an eye on this. But we are getting closer and closer. It was minus 14, now it's minus 11, now it's minus 9. We just want this trade agreement with these boyos and maybe join their market and probably join their market. You know what? We do want to join their market. And what could they even do with the obligation? I don't think they could force protectorates with an obligation. And so maybe we just give them the thing now? Hmm. I think we just give them the thing. And then this kind of fixes a whole lot of our woes uh, because they can produce all of the goods that we categorically cannot produce. Um, we are going to get a little bit of immigration, but it's all going to be uh, accepted pops because we have migration controls. And if it gets to be too much, we can always close the borders. And so um, the thing, the fear is, is that our population explodes too much and we... Uh, it's uh, we can't leverage the fact that we have gold as well as we would like and this is the concern 
maybe we're supposed to ban first, but like right now we can't even fully employ the gold field, but I guess we're kind of close. Um, so this is a little bit rough. We also have very, very little market access because of infrastructure, and so this is another concern. We'll have a little bit of a think. Maybe we need to ban uh, ban Im immigration at this point, though. Okay, we bit the bullet, and we joined their market, and now we can actually pass religious schools using the industrialists. And they just crushed in the election, largely because the farmers, who have a ton of clout, are not eligible to join any party, or don't want to join any party, uh, but we will uh, here, in any rate, be able to go religious schools, which is going to be really, really valuable to us. Um, we also have like full control over what we're building here, which is going to be nice. We expect between the religious schools and uh, the first government administration, we do demarginalize um, the religious folk. But being inside their market now is going to be really, really nice for our SOL uh, because we will have access to the goods. Unfortunately, we will have very poor access to the goods because of the infrastructure problem, but this isn't overall that big a deal. Eventually, we will solve it. We are going corporate charters with the plan of eventually swapping over to going railways. Railways not spreading is really, really slow. We're not going to build universities because I think... Overall, they're not going to positively affect our SOL as much as we want, and it's going to be a very large share of our income, so we're just going to leave it. Um, but actually, you know what? With us joining the market, we maybe don't even need this government administration. The whole point of this government administration is trying to demarginalize these evangelicals, um, which we are really struggling with. They've, they're still on 0% clout. I know you can't really see it, but like 0% clout, which is a struggle. Um... And so maybe we just, yeah, the one government administration, but the government administration is not that useful if we're inside the, the customs union of the UK because the main point was we were going to be able to trade more. So maybe we actually don't do this and instead do one level of university. I think this is okay. I think this is decent, a decent enough shout. Um, and then we are in pretty good shape and we will probably be expanding what we think we can do in order to increase SOL the most, not what is most profitable. And so we'll probably expand these when they get fully employed, mainly focusing on consumer goods uh, from this point on. We get religious schools, which is going to allow us to increase our literacy a lot, and we like the devout political strength. And so this is going to be tremendously nice. We also are right at the cusp of hitting 15 SOL, which is an important break point. For our trade strategy, we are just exporting the luxury goods to Ching, maybe we could export something else and this would be slightly better, but our kind of idea is we are really hoping to try and depress the price of furniture, regular furniture as much as possible, and the uh, regular clothing as much as possible, and so the equilibrium levels of employment on these buildings will be higher if we can increase the price of luxury clothes. So this is kind of the intention behind what we're doing there. Um, but we just get the institution of, uh, you know, uh, the education, so we will be increasing it. We actually don't want this colonial affairs, but it's not too big a deal. Uh, but we do want to unlock new levels of education because this is going to be the primary driver of our research speed, considering we still have one single level of university. We also, just kind of being a little schizophrenic here, have swapped off of corporate charters, realizing that we don't have any gold mines that are eligible uh, for slotting in the gold company anyways. The gold company is what we want. And so instead, we're going to go for railways, which is going to help our uh, problem with lack of market access. Uh, we have a market that is relatively, or we have a state that is like relatively self-sufficient. So being cut off from the market is not this tremendous calamity because we have access to most of the stuff we need. But we can still improve a little bit. You know what? We never swapped up to this. I think we're going to do that uh, despite the fact of us having poor market access and then actually make a a little bit of a swap here uh, to putting up some iron mines because we don't have anything in the queue. We want to keep something in the queue and these iron mines will be okay later on after we get atmospheric engine, which is what we're currently researching. So, um, you know, things are progressing along quite nicely. We do have a movement for poor laws, which is a bit interesting. I don't think it's necessary. The thing is, is this is going to cost us uh, government bureaucracy w at a point where I don't think it's going to be necessary because I don't think we're going to have unemployed pops for the most part. I think this will stay pretty close to zero and so we're actually not going to pass that. And so uh, with that in mind, I think we actually have decent laws considering what we are trying to do. We don't want to overspend on the bureaucracy. We're trying to get to SOL 20 as quickly as possible rather than some sort of like abstraction of um, you know GDP growth in general. We're staying on this one state. And so to that end, something we would want is we would want to ban colonial affairs. I mean, I suppose what we could do is we could use the industrialists now to pass colonial exploitation with the idea of going no colonial affairs, which actually, this is probably a decent enough shout. Ah, but we don't want to lose these bonuses. 
We don't want to lose these bonuses. Okay, you know what? We just we'll stick with what we have for now. I think that this is this is fine enough. Also, shout out to the trade unions being really powerful. I have a feeling once these guys are allowed in a party together, they will just crush, and we will probably have them for kind of most of the game. The industrials are really strong. Investment pool contribution efficiency, not too big a deal, but okay. All right, so we get our first gold fields depleted event, uh, which is, of course, unfortunate. Um, but I think what we're going to do, we really don't care about radicalism. You know what? This modifier has been just absolutely bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Uh, in the case of uh, the extra loyalists from standard of living increases, almost all of our interest groups are super happy. We've also been running minimum taxes this entire time. So this has all actually felt pretty good pretty outstanding as it were and so uh we are going to i forgot what we just did ah yes we had our first mine collapse so it's time to start building up the gold mines which are going to be super nice we have atmo engine which is going to be pretty good as a result of us getting minus 25 percent uh you know research speed on industrial stuff we actually might just want to emphasize the industrial stuff a little bit more um and in particular knowing that gold mines we are hoping this is a relatively large portion of our economy i think we're going to want water to boiler and nitrogen a little bit faster or nitroglycerin a little bit faster than we otherwise would and so this is kind of where we're at but the flip side of this the flip side of this is we really want corporate charters because we really want the gold company i guess we hope we just high roll in three to six weeks that our nat spread is on corporate charters uh we'll do something like this maybe uh but if not i think that we emphasize this just because we're relying a lot on natural spread as a result of having a really high literacy from both education and the fact that we are you know pro promoting social mobility and with the minus speed it makes getting these ones uh, kind of a little bit faster for ourselves, a little bit better, nitroglycerin, water tube, boiler, and railways. So I had forgotten that this gives us minus uh, 25, or sorry, consumption-based taxation actually also gives us minus 50% consumption tax cost. Uh, and we went to put in some consumption taxes and they are real, real cheap right now. Uh, I think that this guy is giving us minus uh, some other authority cost here, but our consumption taxes are only costing us 25. We're putting in a little bit on uh, stuff that is taxing specifically targeting it on the upper strata um just to like give us a bit more buffer to be maintaining our level of construction for a longer period of time plus our university and so um i think that this will be worth it we can as we approach uh 20 sol we can get rid of these consumption taxes and so this will be fine for us we try to pass racial segregation for a little bit of an authority bump but i guess it's just gonna fail now legislative failures the truth it definitely hurts so we got a new election coming up and we just got the liberal party because the intelligentsia demarginalized we might have passed a law that did it but looking at what we're expecting in terms of the outcome the liberal party should absolutely crush with the combination of uh the landowners or sorry the yeoman farmers the trade unionists and the intelligentsia which is going to be super nice for us because we definitely want a doubled bonus on these guys probably more than any other bonus uh, but also the doubled bonus on these guys is going to be super 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 clutch and so we are just hoping uh yeah we will crush the free trade party we're happy about this i i think we'll do mine 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 it's all mine because we're not really trying to get a bunch of pops which is actually probably a reason why we're i think we're gonna even end up going um charity hospitals as well because we actually don't really care if uh sol for the lower strata is much more valuable than for the middling pops um and this minus mortality we don't care about the mortality of the pollution effects reduction but we want to maintain um you know plus 20 percent clout on the evangelicals but i guess they're doing all right maybe we go theocracy instead um which is an interesting shout we could go a theocratic uh you know sense of suffrage the theocracy which i guess the people kind of hate but I mean, this is potentially possible uh, just for having a whole bunch of extra authority. Uh, the fact that we don't really, well, I mean, we care a little bit about legitimacy, but we've been kind of cruising. So maybe theocracy is going to be the way to go if we can get what we want is the 10% throughput, extra throughput on gold mines specifically. This is what we're about. All right, our election just finished and we will see what the reform government looks like. I think we're gonna kind of wanna have a bigot of, well, this looks like what we have to do because it's a bit of a party, uh, but we will be getting the trade unionist clout. Now, here's the thing. These guys are powerful. They don't, they're not super, super happy. So I think we might just try and pass a law to make them specifically happy. I know they like schools. We already have schools. Do they like health system? I think they like health system. I think they don't like, uh, well, they like public health insurance. So maybe we try and get that. The thing we could pass that's gonna cost us uh, some bureaucracy, but I guess that's really not that big a deal, is if I'm not mistaken, they do support poor laws. Um, and so the fact that they support poor laws would allow us to, you know, get a little bit of uh, approval from them. 
Um, it's unfortunate we don't have the approval rating. This is what we really want. But we do have a new president in charge, and it is uh, the trade unionist leader, which is pretty amusing. We've also come in and we've actually deleted our construction sector and moved the port down. Um, we are having difficulty employing the buildings we have up as it is. We kind of would like some labor saving PMs. Um, we are also having difficulty maintaining our kind of level of trade routes. And so um, all in all, I think what is going to be preferable. Yeah, this has more ownership. Ooh, it doesn't necessarily. No, I think the ownership, I think the merchant guild's better for SOL overall. Um, and so we're just kind of continuing with what we have rather than building more buildings. We have nothing under construction we're just wasting our 10 free construction but it's really not too big a deal um i guess in theory well so here's the thing is infrastructure so we need an infrastructure deal and so once we get railroads we'll probably just slap down a couple of railroads and this will be the thing but until then i don't think building a single marginal building will actually help us what we can do actually what we can do we have to juggle i hate juggling so here's what we're going to do we're going to build a textile mill and then before it finishes we're going to kick it to the bottom of the queue and we are going to do this oh my god they barely are employed up Let's have a little bit of a thing. So what we can do is we can juggle. And what I mean by juggle is we will start working on something, wait until it's almost completed, and then kick it to the bottom of the queue. And so we'll just look for what is the absolute most employed. And it turns out everyone's just working in the gold mines because they're not morons. We love it when they're not morons, but this this leaves us feeling like there's there's something more we could do. But really, I guess there really isn't too much more. We could juggle stuff. I guess we... I don't even know if it's proper to juggle stuff. We're going to try and juggle. Well, no, we're, we're not going to tear our hair out. The idea is, before something completes, you kick it to the bottom of the queue. That way, you don't have to deal with the fact that it's taking up infrastructure. This is the idea, but we're not going to do it. So we actually aren't doing anything militarily. We don't have a single battalion, no nothing. Shout out to 1 million GDP, though. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be swapping off a of pro army onto national militia, which will further marginalize uh, the armed forces who are already at 0.5% clout because we have no army, uh, but uh, it will be making the trade unions really, really happy, which is something we like because we really like that workforce ratio on top of you know 10 percent workforce ratio very 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 strong but the manufacturing industry's throughput is also going to be nice and this is going to allow us to employ up more boyos here which is going to be great still not constructing anything still waiting on railroad all right so we can also now pass property to women off the back of you know our women or rather the intelligentsia being a gov this will make them happy which will give us extra migration what we're giving up is birth rate we don't really care about birth rate because again uh this will decrease the proportion of people who can be working in the gold mine and so instead we're gonna go property to women which will give us workforce ratio kind of reaching uh, the little bit of the home sprint maybe it feels like here because once we get <laughs> we're about to get railroads once we get railroads and once we build those railroads I think we might actually hit this 20 binger SOL um, you know this is not probably not the absolute fastest you can do this uh, to get this achievement but it is going to be uh, you know a pretty nice one uh, or I think this is a decent clip we are gonna after this be going to nitroglycerin for the resource discovery chance you can re-roll uh you know like every month uh in order to like if you really wanted to min max the speed on this and then we're gonna go corporate charters so that we can slot in the gold company we did have another mine uh shaft breakdown and so we do have a little bit more gold which is going to allow us to you know kind of have a little bit of progress i think we just do this get property and women in through a little bit faster but we will once these finish up this will be super nice well it'll be super nice <laughs> actually so one thing is really funny is uh you basically don't uh in terms of not having market access gold is one of the best things to have because the price is constant and so it's very very resilient to not having market access so in terms of us having not enough infra to you know uh, connect to the market. This is uh, not too bad in the case of our entire economy being gold right now. And so um, this is going to work for us, I think. We also have another university in the queue, uh, which is kind of whatever. Um, I forget. I think the math is such that it's the same. I can't remember. Uh, and then uh, we will be continuing on. But re yeah, really kind of just waiting on this railroad here. And then once we have that, I think what we will do is we will just go for as much infrastructure as possible uh, per guy, uh, rather than doing the thing that positively affects, you know, our bottom line, because we haven't cared about our bottom line in forever, which is that we are not going to, we're going to prioritize infrastructure, which we normally never do on the railways, uh, but we're going to do it now. And so let's do this, and let's prioritize, uh, 
uh, we're going to do experimental trains and we're going to do cargo prioritization but we of course will not forget that we have an urban center very important that we keep this going because uh, giving transportation the pops will consume the transportation which this will be tremendous the price is a little expensive for us to use it as a labor saving pm but this is going to be something we're going to be interested in down the line when we get a more of these and so i think that we even kick it ahead of uh this uh gold mine uh and i think we will probably need another one of these at the back anyways and so we will actually let's just put it on well no we're gonna control it we're gonna do this but yeah we're not uh gaining the extra transportation here instead we're gonna stay on cargo prior well do we want to stay on cargo prioritization we'll try staying on cargo prioritization for now especially because we don't have enough infra but this is this should be the home stretch here i think once we get uh this thing built okay we probably should have passed this earlier but we're just gonna go charity hospitals this will help to empower the evangelicals um also if we take a look at the population tab we see that roughly in terms of percentages a sixth of our economy or a sixth of our pops will not be affected um, by the increased free SOL. However, it, you know, 80% of our pops is, are in the lower strata. So the fact that this is only applying to the lower strata in the case of charity hospitals, really not that big a deal. We're not really caring about the pollution effects because we're not trying to grow our pop or our GDP to an astronomical figure. And so the fact that it's, you know, okay, it's worse than public health insurance. Uh, we don't care too much. And also, we view the uh, increased, uh, you know, clout of the devout. We view this as a positive modifier. And so, and then on top of that, we will be getting work ethic activated, which actually is kind of irrelevant, but... It, it, it's irrelevant right now because we don't have a company, but if we have a company, it's going to matter a whole, whole lot. And so we're just going to do that. The first level should kick us above 18% or 18 standard of living. So this is going to be a really, really nice trajectory for us. Still waiting on some stuff to come through, but um, uh, fractional distillation. If one of these starts gnat spreading, like if this starts gnat spreading, we will swap off of it. Um, and so uh, we will swap off of researching it actively. We are hoping that water tube boiler starts not spreading or nitroglycerin starts not spreading. That way we can get the company a little bit faster. So I think it was just a little bit interesting to note is we were thinking of decreasing our trade uh, because uh, this is affecting clout in a way we don't like. We have this absolute monstrous petite bourgeoisie clout as a result of having the trade center. The trade center, of course, is being operated mainly by merchant guild boyos. Um, and it's also giving us migration and attraction. Uh, but then we take a look at this number. The average, uh, you know, wage, it's all in shopkeepers and it's 12.7. I think we're kind of okay keeping this, but just as a frame of reference, the gold has got an average wage of 8.6. The gold fields have an average wage of 1.4, but this is like an aberration. I don't think this is exactly how it works because they always have a high SOL. Um, but this is a bit of an interesting one. So maybe we even want to increase trade volume overall. Um, we're not going to touch it for now, but we're not going to, uh, you know, decrease trade. And so I think that mercantilism in specifically might be a really big driver of us being able to keep doing this. And so maybe it's the case that, you know, in, uh, we will want to even import, uh, if it can be really profitable, the very goods that are going to really uh, positively affect SOL. So actually, let's actually add this. We'll really care about the productivity. So we'll import from the Qing and the Taiping market. Ooh, yikes. I didn't realize that they had broken up. Uh, it's always awkward when the, when the, where there's a breakup and you got to talk and pretend like everything's fine um but we will yeah we'll keep that for now i think that'll be a fine enough one and so that should actually increase help to increase sol because decreasing uh you know the price of grain specifically uh is going to be really good for us on the front of uh you know if we take a look here this is the primary thing we care about. We want to decrease the price of these three goods primarily. And so to the extent we can import it, we actually do want to do this. Let's also import from the Russians. I think that'll be fine. Uh, we don't want to go too low on the productivity, uh, but we also want to make sure we don't actually have too many convoys. We just want the one boat only. And so I think we maybe import... I guess if we can import the furniture from them, we too may maybe want to do this. Um, but we are specifically not looking to uh, increase the tr size of the trade routes. We want the trade route size to be capped. That way they are overall going to be more productive. And so this will pull a whole bunch of pops into these. And so this is actually... Um, I, I did not imagine that trade route was going to be uh, as big a driver of you know increasing this as before. But now this is dropping. So... Maybe that's not exactly operating how we want, but we, we have really important techs coming on up, especially water tube boiler after that are going to, you know, make the gold mines in particular spectacular.
Okay, so we're just about to finish our fifth gold mine, and I think we're going to take a little bit of a swap here in terms of what decrees we're using. We have been using the manufacturing decree, but I think we're going to stop now that we have so much gold and switch back to the resource one, which will give 20% throughput on these uh, gold mines specifically, which is going to make them a lot more valuable. We're like printing money, basically. We see the SOL kicks up real hard from us doing that, um, but uh, we, we can't build more gold mines until more of these appear. And so to that end, it's going to be really important once we get onto nitroglycerin because this is going to help us. We got a mass migration though. We don't like that. And so after this, we might close the borders. This is unfortunate. Uh, we did not want a mass migration because now the population is going to explode, uh, which is going to decrease SOL. And so we might close the borders after this. You know, the highly reactionary border close in response to a mass migration, this feels like the truest of all simulations. We're going to see, can't really reform the government to anything looking any better than this. Uh, pretty happy with this massive liberal party. Uh, the evangelicals are coming on up. A uh, big thing, uh, contributor to the cloud of the industrialists is actually... Um, you know, these, uh, and I think what we might do, uh, or what we might try and do if we get the chance, is actually on terms of laws, uh, going for outlawed dissent or up in this direction. I guess we maybe just stay on censorship. We don't really care about getting onto guaranteed libs at this point. I don't think we want to build a lot of bureaucracy. Uh, and so, uh, if we don't care about that, and we in particular want to suppress the industrialists in order to bring them down to raise other people up so we can try and get the doubled bonus for 10% workforce ratio off these guys, um, then the fact that we would be getting extra suppression, uh, you know, uh, effect and extra bolster effect is really valuable. And so, all right, so watching our, you know, SOL steadily go down as we get a bunch of incoming migrants has felt super, super bad. You can see we don't, we, we're not on, we're not happy about any of this. And also, uh, closing the borders is now very, very difficult because we actually need really powerful uh, agricultural guys in order to do it. And they are not powerful at all because our government is now, or our economy is now entirely, it's like 100% trade in gold. This is our entire economy. The trade is really helping to bring up the industrialists who were trying to suppress and uh the you know the other stuff i mean the trade unions are coming on up uh it's like all of this feels bad but we have an opportunity to get rid of some of these migrants by <laughs> shipping them off to war so the u.s has declared war on us we're gonna put a revoke claim on california and then we're gonna mobilize uh all the troops we can and so we're just gonna come in here we're gonna create an army we're gonna go here we are going to uh just conscript up a whole bunch but before we do that we of course we will want to rake back a little bit of this and this um, we will eventually want to pay high military wages, but that's not going to be a factor yet. And we will recruit a commander, this guy's defensive strategist, so he'll be perfect. We'll put him on adamant defense. And then we'll just, uh, you know, whoop, actually, that's not what we wanted. We wanted that. So now we will have be able to have a 19 stack. And so good luck landing this 19 stack of skirmish, my guy. Uh, just pure skirmish infantry on adamant defense. Good luck to you. We wish you luck. We wish you so much luck. We wish you all the luck, uh, but it's not going to help you. And on top of this, uh, UK will almost certainly side with us. They won't really be able to help us out because they won't put anyone in our HQ, so it's really not that big a deal. Mexico might be willing to... No, we're not going to become their subject, so Mexico's going to be like, whatever. We get... Ugh. Dios. That's not ideal, but... We should be fine through this war. Uh, we will also take care to pay these guys extra. Um, they will be fighting for us after all, and uh, we should be fine. Now, we do not want to put in any additional war goals. The reason being is this will not require us to occupy anything. If I am not mistaken, another war goal might require us to occupy something. We don't want to have to occupy something because we won't be able to occupy anything, and so we would just have to white piece them out. And so this is what we're going to be going for in this war. Really didn't want to get doubt on, but uh, I think that we could survive this. Yeah, would, they're going to send some boats, and okay, we're just going to deal with it. I suppose we could recruit up some actual military, but I think that we'll be fine with just this. And so we will continue on our merry way, as it were. Maybe we go theocracy now? No, uh, anyways, I think we're fine. I think we're in good shape.
a-okay no need to worry all right not only are we okay we're like super okay they're not even trying to land us we don't need to uh take anything in order to enforce uh you know taking this out france is bankrolling us apparently and we're about to get you know nitroglycerin in just a few weeks and so we're just super super we couldn't be more okay we might stand down this army we don't even need an army i don't even know why we thought we needed an army just like super chill mode on this war this is awful we needed to close the borders earlier now we're getting another mass migration. Just punished. Just uber punished. So I think... Maybe we need to bolster the yeoman farmers instead of the trade unions. The problem is, is we have negative authority that we uh, would kind of like to keep maintain. This is uh, unfortunate. I mean, I guess we could try and close the borders with 4% clout, to be honest. And, okay, how mad do people get? Not super, super mad. Maybe we just luck sack it. Definitely want to get these borders closed, though. Close the borders, build a wall, etc. Okay, this is going to be a super nice inflection point for us because we can now slot in the gold company, uh, which is going to give us 20... Well, it's not going to be 20% throughput. It's going to... Wow, why do we have such a nice throughput bonus? Oh, because some of it's from the Evangelicals. Okay, so we're going to be getting roughly 20%, uh, but 5% of this is coming from the Evangelicals, which is going to give us a throughput on this bad boy. Now, we're having some trouble with this situation because the UK is not providing enough explosives to the market, which is a bit unfortunate. We're kind of waiting on them to do it. Uh, we don't want to kill the, the sell orders, or the buy orders, rather. But why don't we just import uh, in order to make this work? Let's import from Prussia, actually, instead. That'll work a little bit better than the U.S., or it'll be a little bit more productive, which is something we are kind of uh, caring about. And uh, what we will do on specifically the explosives is we will uh, take a look at the explosives, and we will import... Oh, we can't import prioritize since they are not uh, part of your market. Wait, what? Okay, well, whatever. Um, in any case, the, the fact that this is solved is going to be great for us because this is going to make sure that we're not suffering a throughput malice as a result of not having enough. But back to the point. Actually, I don't think we want minus attraction on these guys. Yeah, okay, well, whatever. That's fine enough. Uh, but the point is, is now we have this massive, like, 40% throughput, um, which is going to be huge for us, uh, making the gold very, very profitable. We have, we could spend more, a little bit more. You know what? What's the average wage of the universities? I think it's actually pretty high. Um, let's see. The total weekly wages is this. And so the wages, let's see, to the academics, uh, it's going to be 2K. Mm, we have to do math because it's not t telling us base wage is this. Hmm. And then very high government wages. That's a decent size wage. It would help us get the tax we want faster if we just built more of these. Maybe we build up to five to get the bonus. I'm not sure. We'll have a thing. All right, we were perhaps a little bit saved by gold collapse, not only because we can build more gold mines, which is fantastic, uh, this is, we're also having significant problems passing this, but also because it's going to give us minus migration attraction, which is exactly what we want. Minus 50% from gold mines depleted, this is perfect. We have a tragedy of dropping down to like 15, and now we're kind of coming back up, and so this is going to be really, really nice for us. Um, and we're, we're really not getting anywhere with closing the borders. Still want to get them closed. The extra construction speed is pretty nice on the gold mines. Uh, the fact that we built a few more, maybe we can get back up to the 18 kind of range. But we're hoping we do it... Well, actually, we shouldn't get another mass migration with this minus 50% penalty. Uh, or, sorry, this minus 50% bonus uh and so hopefully this allows us to kind of come on up the intelligentsia also giving us a bonus is uh kind of makes us actually want to piss the intelligentsia off uh which would be preferable no not like this please make it stop just let us close the borders no all right we couldn't close the borders this is not ideal also something we realized we're not taxing anyone anything so Running a bureaucracy deficit actually doesn't actually... There's no penalty, effectively, for us for running a bureaucracy deficit. We don't care. So I guess we'll never be building a government administration. I mean, we care in the sense that it's... Okay, it affects our consumption tax. Ooh, the one consumption tax we're running that we really just don't care about. In fact, we'd probably rather just float the authority anyways. Um, nah, we shouldn't have done that. We should have just kept it in, because now we can't put it back in. But still, don't really care too much about it. The industrialists... Mm, the trade unions not being able to come on up is a bit of a problem. 
the evangelicals we do we are getting the double bonus from them now though which does mean we will be getting around 20 percent throughput on these mines and so now we have close to 50 percent throughput in total we just wish we had fewer people in our country because then we would be able to have you know 20 sol all right this gives us like 50 per, plus 50 percent output on mines which is pretty good but i just don't think we have quite enough to like make it to the plus 20 and so now it's like almost a race against the bonus to negative migration attraction um also we realized uh that in order to increase institutions we are going to need uh bureaucracy and this will be the reason for maybe building some bureaucracy but what we could do is we could just nuke all of our trade routes and then put our trade routes back in something like this that's not that attractive from a gameplay perspective, but so maybe we'll need one uh, because once we get pharmaceuticals, we will be getting another one SOL on our lower strata from uh, charity hospitals, but that's just doesn't look like enough. We just like, we got too many, we got too much migration. It feels bad, man. So now it's changing from we were thinking we were going to do this in one episode. Maybe this is going to actually have to be more long-term. Water tube boiler also unlocks labor-saving PMs. Let's see if we can turn them on. We cannot because we have industry banned. So this is not allowed. That's illegal. So this is going to this is gonna hurt a lot because labor-saving PMs would be the normal way you would kind of increase SOL. And we don't have access to it. So we might have just low-rolled missing a window, basically. Uh, in that we had to ban, we had to ban immigration. We just got nuked by three mass migration events in a row. You could see them. Ook. Ook. Or I guess just two, but we got to close these borders. Oh, we were so close to being able to start banning borders and we get this North Italian migration. Bro, this is going to take us over one million pops. This is going to hurt. Uh, we just want to close the borders. Let us do it, please. We're trying to raise SOL here, not raise GDP. We don't care about the GDP, just the SOL. So, I mean, we have this mass migration. Um, can we somehow make the Intelligentsia super mad? Because the Intelligentsia are currently giving us this plus 50% migration attraction modifier. So Operation Piss Off the Intelligentsia has begun. So let's promote this guy. And let's say smell you later. Oh, minus five. Oh, no. We'll lose the bonus. Oh my god, we wouldn't lose the bonus. Did you see it just tick up to 10? That's catastrophic. That's so... Uh, it's so bad. We actually probably do want this guy um, around, but let's... Ooh, we want the yeoman farmer around uh, to increase the cloud here. But let's, let's get this guy and then let's fire him. Oh no, now we're going to lose the bonus. Um... I think we also promote these guys, to be honest. Or we hold off on promoting because we want to increase... We're about to get pharmaceuticals, or we just got pharmaceuticals. So we want to build some bureaucracy up. Uh, and with that bureaucracy, we are going to increase to the institution. And then we don't care about our administration. But we have now gotten rid of the bonus. Oh, it has to be at least eight. Son of a bizzle, dude. So we're going to try and get rid of the Intelligentsia bonus yet again. So we're going to promote you a couple times. And then we're going to retire you. Actually, you know what? Let's promote you all the way. Yeah, get rid of that bonus. Now we will not have plus 50% migration attraction, which is all right with us. Uh, we, of course, will want the bureaucracy just for the purpose of increasing the health institution, but we're just going to need enough to do this, and then then we should be in fine shape. But yeah, we are we are we are trying to close these borders. Uh, to this end, actually, we would like this guy to be really powerful. The problem is, it's going to cost five bureaucracy each promotion. So I think we hold off uh, until we finish uh, at the very least this. Also, trying to bring up their clout by building some wheat farms and this type of stuff. Very strange. Not normally how we play a type of playthrough, but. It is what it is. All right, now that we're increasing the institutions up to the levels we want anyways, we can do whatever we want. And what we want is we want to promote and get the yeoman farmers powerful. So we're going to promote all their guys to government. Um, we don't care about pissing off the intelligentsia because we hate them. Because they give us a malice when they are uh, plus 10, as it were. We care a little bit because we actually don't want to lose one of their bonuses. So let's actually just cycle through some of these guys. I guess we could recruit a navy. We're specifically looking for... Um, 
we let's see what we have access to in terms of admirals we're specifically looking for landowner or sorry land reform guys so that we can increase clout um and we are let's get rid of these guys we don't really care about uh you know your bonus which you're giving to us because to be honest it's not very important for us to have decreased uh you know interest rate when this is the state of affairs so we're just gonna cycle through some of these guys looking for looking for more rural folk which is unfortunate. We might just want to like let the game think for a second because the rural folk cloud should be a little bit higher. Um, we also got an agitator who's agitating for this, uh, but we definitely want these guys' cloud to be coming on up. Um, yeah, and it's come up a little bit from the agitator, which will help us to find new guys. Uh, but I think that, well, let's actually see. Who can we afford to lose a bunch of uh, approval on? I guess the industrialists aren't providing with us with a bonus or a malice, so we can kind of just recruit them and then send them on their merry way. Um, the landowners, I think, are completely marginalized, so we don't care about them anymore anyways. Uh, the intelligentsia... Uh, the in I, these guys we can lose one bonus off of, or one approval off of and it'll be fine these guys aren't really providing us with a bonus but we're gonna keep doing this actually well we're not gonna do this forever we're kind of just like low rolling not finding any rural folk guys because this is really what we're trying to find um and we're not finding any god that sucks we're trying to get it so we can just uh promote a bunch of these guys to be fair we don't mind the evangelical guys sticking around and then this guy let's get rid of him this will be our final roll but we are looking for the a bonus to clout that these guys provide uh, by being, you know, high ranking. And so it's a little unfortunate we couldn't get what they want. Mexico is getting clapped. We should be relatively safe from the U.S. We actually probably should have sided on the U.S.'s side uh, just to reset their attitude towards us. But hopefully these guys have a little bit of a come up because they are who we are using to uh, close the borders. With 27% enactment chance now, though, collectively... Now we feel a little bit more comfortable that we can actually get this through. We're also already on study, and so maybe this will be the kind of break that we need. All right, it evolved using an exploit, but we did manage to get closed borders, which is very necessary for the run. The exploit being, um, if you have a tick uh, and the tick goes badly for you, you can just slot the guys out of government. Uh, or you reload, you slot the guys out of government, you create an illegitimate government, you wait one day, and then you slot them back into government, and then following that, uh, you will get a new roll of the law pass. We did that, and unfortunately, unfortunately, as you may have noticed, we lost access to our trade unionist guys, so we're going to be trying to re-bolster them in. Um, we are less uh, concerned about getting the yeoman farmers up, but if we can get a doubled bonus, the infrastructure and also agricultural uh, throughput, this type of bonus uh, would be pretty nice for us doubled, um, considering like what our economy looks like overall. Uh, more gold has appeared, but we've closed the borders. That means we will be getting no migration. No migration coming in. Zero. Zero. Zilch. Which means now we are going to try and steadily improve standard of living uh, without any interruptions uh, from some people coming on in. To that end, we are going to be making a little bit of a line towards pump jacks. I'm not 100% sure if this is disallowed uh, by industry banned, but pump jacks will be very useful because we will be able to export the cotton and the wine and these will be reasonably efficient uh, per labor, especially considering we can't use labor-saving PMs like water tube boiler. And so, uh, you know, the, the truth, it hurts. Uh, but we will be researching this most of the way and then swapping to Steam Donkey, really trying to slingshot ourselves ahead towards pump jacks. We've discovered most of the gold already, so that's not going to help us out too much. And we're just kind of, you know, it's going to be mainly just chill and wait mode. Uh, for a while. We won't necessarily build uh, more buildings. We do have peasants, so we have to de-peasant them, uh, but we are not going to absolutely spam buildings um, if there's no one available to employ up in them, and so this type of thing. We might do a lot more trade routes, uh, but um, we'll see. We'll take looks. All right, because of all the pops we've gotten, this is going slow as molasses, just trying to slowly come on up, so we got a new plan. The new plan is to take Alaska, uh, and Alaska, similarly, does well we're looking at the wrong alaska alaska does have gold they also have coal mines which is kind of nice because we don't have coal ourselves but this we're inside the market so it doesn't really matter um and also we are nervous about uh the usa and if we have alaska we can just scuttle on over to alaska instead and get the achievement uh we would be giving up california so this is not really what we would prefer to do but considering this is mainly just an achievement run and we just super scuffed by not closing the borders early on i think that this will probably be uh our solution 
solution to the problem. So we have gotten one army and one boat. And hopefully with these two, we can conquer Alaska. The main thing is we need USA to not side against us, but fortunately, uh, Alaska does appear to have a rivalry with the USA and vice versa. And so the we don't have to worry about that. We should be able to get the landing in. And then with the singular Navy, we should actually just be able to cheese uh, our ability to get landed by Russia in return. Um, we maybe want to recruit one more boat. That's why we kind of prepped this a little bit ahead of time. But um, what we can do is we can just keep cycling, recruiting admirals, sending them out, letting them brick the, the landing, and then... Uh, just kind of on repeat um, and then we are conscripting up as well on top of this uh, so we would be able to defend against minor landings but I'm anticipating that we just kind of get in on Alaska we get what we want and then we get out because everyone knows you can take Alaska with just a boat and a dream uh, this is this is the classic and so we're just gonna get in there we have a boat we have a dream and oh no they're going to try and naval land us whatever will we do what we will do is we will well maybe we should recruit another Navy maybe we should have prepared a little bit more uh, we would like a second fleet, to be honest. Uh, so we will try and recruit that up. Uh, I think that... We'll see if that'll allow us to have a second fleet. But we're going to occupy there quick enough, and then we're going to return. And yeah, we probably don't even need the second fleet, to be honest. But what we will do is we will station them here, and then we will get ready to play the brick ski of the War Goal Z as we try and enforce down on Russia. And of course on Russia, we have War Goals and Conquer Alaska. We are ready to enforce. They won't take back Alaska. They will instead just try and repeatedly land California. And so we'll see what we can do on defense. The thing what we're talking about though, is this guy will be able to brick, uh, you know, the landing for a second if we move him out here, uh, but then he'll die and then he'll get sent back. But what we could do is we could just recruit another general and repeatedly do that. And we can keep doing that until we enforce on them because they won't bother to land Alaska. So we should be able to get it in either case. The big thing that was sketchy was USA siding against us, but they're not gonna side with their rival. I don't even think they're eligible to side with their rival. And so we'll be taking Alaska here. So the first landing they tried to just land with a single boat. Uh, and now we have a little bit of a choice because they're already be enforced by the time the second landing comes in. We can do the cheese. We can just keep doing it repeatedly no sweat off our back we can just do this and then hope they can't land us hurdy der because we have another guy inside their like hq and we can just keep doing we're actually going to do the cheese but we're just going to show off the cheese as soon as this guy gets defeated we'll just uh you know recruit a new admiral zip him back out and uh oh no we got a naval battle oh no he got clapped oh no whatever will we do uh we'll just do this and then we'll just say yeah you know what just keep keep doing what you're doing keep doing you man just keep doing you just you do you, man. You know, there's nothing they can do but let you do you while they get enforced down. And this is big nice. And, like, we're just going to get, you know, the bag. The whole bag. Nothing but the bag. Uh, so help us God. And so we're just going to keep doing it. Uh, it's like, oh, no. They got in on a battle. They got in on a battle. They will win that battle, probably. But what we could do is... Ooh, we got another navy. All right. Super nice. This is exactly what we want. Um, we will just recruit up some guys. We will say... Hey, you gotta have to e defeat each one of these guys once. You gotta have to beat each one of these guys once, my guy. Each one of these guys, you gotta beat them once. Good luck. Good luck. Oh, they keep beating them. Terrible. They actually beat them really fast. This cheese doesn't work as well as I remember. Do they nerf the cheese? You gotta do a battle to send it back. Or, that battle was instant. Yeah, the truth is we actually have, like, no boils left. Okay, we'll just settle for Alaska then. You know, we're sorry. Actually, did you even win that first battle? Let's see. They did win the first battle. So we'll settle for Alaska. We'll say, our bad. You know, we'll just take Alaska. You can keep your war reps because money's not even real for us anyways. Really not a big deal. And so uh, we'll send you on your way. Thanks for Alaska, though. It'll be nice. AKA California. We'll incorporate this because we don't care about bureaucracy at all because it gives us tax waste. We're not running any taxes except for consumption taxes. And we're, we don't even have any consumption taxes in. So who cares? But what we will care about is getting these five gold mines up and going. So we'll put them all at the front of the queue. Do we have enough infrastructure for this? Uh, we do not have enough, or we have just short of enough infrastructure. But what we can do, and what we will do, is we will... Well, we could actually violently suppress to decrease the effects of turmoil. Let's do that. And then... Yeah, let's just do that. That'll be fine. Um, we will need a little bit more infrastructure. But if I recall correctly, this place does have a port, and it's almost certainly on... Oh, no, wait, we would kind of want it on Anchorage? Hmm. What, so what we're thinking about now is we actually probably want to use road maintenance here. 
uh, on California, and we just don't quite have enough. Um, unless... No, we don't have an enlistment efforts going. So, hmm, we're just shy of enough to want to do our thing. We are doing violent losers. Ah, whatever. We'll just take off the violent suppression and instead do... Well, no. We'll do road... We'll put road maintenance in for violent suppression later. Uh, but uh, only once we are working on the fourth gold mine. Or the fifth gold mine. We'll swap out and we'll have enough infrastructure for all of those. And this will probably be enough to get us over 20 SOL. I mean, maybe we might as well just do the Joshua Norton thing, huh? So we will say... Uh, nope. We're not going to exile him. We'll say... Joshua Norton gets this, and let him proclaim, I assume. He tried to proclaim himself in California. <laughs> We're just seeing if we have an agitator slot. Oh, we do have an agitator slot. Let him proclaim. Let him proclaim all he wants. So we will see if we can get King Joshua Norton, because I think this is another achievement anyways, which is like... I mean, it's kind of amusing. We're not even really going for this, but if I recall correctly, there is one for making him king... Oh, no, well, we don't see any of it, but I guess we'll just have a crack at making him king anyways, because this is memes. Uh, we just need to put him in charge of the petite bourgeoisie, and then, ooh, well, here's the thing. We need to somehow get the intelligentsia out from power, which will actually be a bit of a trick. But we'll keep that guy around for now. He has a movement to uh, enact monarchy. Uh, we are con currently still constructing up some of these ones in Alaska. The turmoil is decreasing at a pretty good clip, uh, mainly because we're adding so many such good jobs uh, by, you know, adding these gold mines, which are going to help to bring back the SOL up from its drop from incorporating Alaska. Um, we don't, Alaska doesn't have a very high population, and so we were, are functionally increasing the amount of our population or the proportion of our population that is in gold mines, which is what we want to do. Like, if we take a look and we look at the gold mines, we see that the average wage in them is like 11. The average wage in here is not that high, uh, you know, as it was before. The average wage here, not so high, not so high, not so high. And so we are trying to have places that have high average wages. I mean, they're relatively high in some of these spots, so this is going to be good for us. And so um, we're just going to keep on chugging along the woods. Spectacular. Big part of this is off the back of the fact that we have you know, a 20% logging industry throughput bonus, which is really, really strong. Uh, but I guess we'll try and get Emperor Norton, huh? The big nice. I think that the achievement requires that you be playing the USA. And we're not playing the USA, we're playing California. Uh, nor is there a way for us to reasonably annex the USA in any sort of time frame that's like anything but like completely strange. This is really nice on uh, for getting restricted child labor though. Um, but yeah, we are just continuing on our way, trying to eco up. Yeah, it feels like we are stalling out here. This is such a struggle bus. And um, the thing is, is what we really would like in order to... Ugh, I guess maybe what we're supposed to do is just give up California. Man, <laughs> they primary demanded both. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> ah, so if we can give up California, we'll get the achievement, I think. Because we just have uh, we just have gold mines here, and that's kind of it. Um, and that's almost all of our pops. And uh, their average annual wage... Well, their average annual wage hasn't come up quite so high yet. But they will be depeasanted relatively quickly. And so maybe giving up California is part of a strategy. The flip side is, is this is gonna hurt. Um, <laughs> they want both. I mean, we can prevent them from landing uh, Alaska, I think. I don't think we can prevent them from taking California. The real problem is that um, the UK is not gonna help us out as much as we need here. I mean, we could conscript up and see what we can do, but this also might just be death of the run. We'll see if we can give up just California to get the achievements and something like this, uh, but this is... Uh, Things are going, this is this is not the ideal thing. So I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get rid of one of our bolsters or suppresses. Um, this is, we're not getting them about 20% clout anytime soon. We're going to use enlistment efforts here. Uh, we are going to recruit up as much skirmish as we can. Oh, baby, actually, maybe we could fight this. We have, like, way more guys than we thought we did. Um, so we'll mobilize and just purely on defense... Uh, oh, I guess we wanted to put in... We'll put in extra supplies. We have a ton of uh, resources, or we have a ton of gold, and we've had it for forever, and we aren't spending it on anything, so I suppose we could use all this, uh, and that should be fine. Yeah, it's going to cause us a malice, but that malice is going to be recovered. And maybe, maybe, maybe we could defend this. Um, the thing is, is we actually... I think we don't even... Mountain might be good. But I think we don't even have someone who's defensive, so maybe we let this guy go. 
hopefully we don't lose our bonus off that. Uh, we don't have anyone with oh, defensive strategist, I don't think. Maybe we're okay either way, but it's probably not okay. We don't want to give up that guy, we don't want to give up that guy, because they are improving the cloud of guys we care about. So maybe we just retire these guys. And we're looking for someone with defensive strategist. Okay, well, you know, we want these guys to get their doubled bonus, so we're just going to do this, and we're just going to hope. Play a little bit of a hope time. Now, on the flip side is uh, we actually deleted some of our navy. We're going to need to uh, <laughs> undelete our navy, as it were. And what we're going to do is maybe we're supposed to put in one in Alaska, too, here. And what this will do is this will allow us to break a whole lot of um, naval landings on Alaska. And if they don't put in on Alaska, I think we just try and preserve what we have. We could sway with become subject. Let's see if they just are willing to give up the bag for free. You know what, though? Hmm. We're going to have a little bit of a think. Um, we have war reps in here anyways. Maybe we sway with become protectorate. And then uh, we try and take Arizona and Nevada. Again, with the theory being we are increasing the proportion of places we have that have gold so that we could try and do this. I don't know, this seems... Okay. All right, the war is off, and it is a bit sketchy because we're going to get full occupied here. Um, I don't think there's a way to avoid this. However, I don't think it bricks our army uh, that we have, you know, raised. I think that, no, yeah, we've fully mobilized everything. We're throwing the bag at it, and we get occupied. Oh, no, whatever will we do? Well, we'll, we'll retreat to Alaska, and I don't think from Alaska they are going to have a good chance of landing us, and then we could look to reoccupy California at an opportune time. I think to this end, we actually maybe want to decrease the conscripts a little bit, just one, and then with that, we're going to create another army. Uh, we're going to create it in Pacific Coast, because that's all we got. Um, and then we open... this guy should be fine. And we are going to put in the conscript. Uh, well, actually, I suppose if we got two, we're going to do it like this. No, actually, we're going to do it like this. We're going to do this guy. And so we're going to raise the single conscript, and we're going to put in... yeah. Uh, well, I guess we lost access to that last little bit. Uh, but the idea is we're going to be able to land with that one stack at some point in time, eventually. And the UK is doing the things. Now, why... Oh, they control our capital. Hmm. Maybe... Can we just give you just California? Will you say yes to that? No, you won't. Uh, and we don't have a boat yet. We are lacking in a boat department. We are lacking in the boat department. We don't like to be lacking in the boat department. They caught us lacking, and this might be just the, the death of things. Yep. Oh, boy. Except the bug. I forgot about the bug. We actually can't get enforced on until they enforce on the UK. <laughs> If you become subject of someone else, you can't get enforced on. <laughs> ah, I forgot about this. Okay. Um, so they can't enforce on us because of reasons. Uh, and so as long as the UK wants to stick this out, uh, we will be able to do stuff. And so uh, why don't we just... Uh, where are you protecting? De defending? You're defending in the District of Columbia, of course. Naturally, this guy's obviously, this stack here, obviously is defending in the British Columbia. But what we can do is we can just reoccupy this. But I think we're going to wait uh, for this to come on up. Main reason being, uh, we would rather have landing, we would rather do, be doing a landing with the Lancer and be getting a rapid advance uh, than doing the landing with our 17 stack. And so, um, nah, 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 you can't enforce on us because the game's bugged. He he he, hoo hoo hoo. It's taking forever for these to conscript up. We would have to delete all the conscripts that aren't conscripted from this and then re-conscript. And instead, I think we're just going to land and try and push with our 28 stack because they are going to be really slow coming back to this front and we will hopefully be able to get back or occupy all of Nevada and Arizona here. Uh, and in doing so, we will be able to enforce down on them. If not, we could just leave the front, rejoin, and uh, kind of proceed on our way that way. Uh, but also, uh, it's going to make it much, much easier for the UK to get to these fronts. Oh, we, we have them. We have all the war goals now. Yeah, uh, so they won't be able to enforce on us. Now, as soon as we're here, yeah, so now we're going to switch everything to defense. We're going to do delaying tactics, defend front, 
delaying tactics, we really just need to slow them down more than anything so that the, the UK has time to get to this front, uh, but we will be enforcing on them really easy. Well, really easy is probably the really not how we should be wording on it, but we are enforcing on them. If they can't push us in the time before the UK gets here, um, you know, we should be in pretty good shape. Mm, someone's getting syphilis. Little tour to tour to whatever. We'll just do that. Whatever. Um, uh, but it looks like they're going to be getting here. We're going to have a really large... Well, are they going to be getting here? They're schizoing out. They're freaking out. They're freaking out because this war is, like, obtuse. Because they can't actually enforce this below zero. Because they have to occupy the capital of the UK to enforce this below zero. Big nice. What is this? This is actually... I've not seen the AI behave like this before. Is the UK getting in over there? Alright, well, the, I guess the armies are going to run around like ants for like the next 20 minutes or something. Alright, so this run's actually dead. <laughs> because the UK is going to capitulate here. Despite the fact that they're not willing to concede, just conquer California, which, uh, you know, we would be fine with. Um, and so, because they think we can get the war goals, but then, then this. And so, <laughs> we, we had a good we had a good run of things. We almost got the SOL high enough, and then we got all these mass migrations. But this is uh, this is we'll try we'll chalk it up to being an unsuccessful run. Um, a little bit uh, we're still gonna publish it because I think that uh, this was amusing enough and also highlights a lot of the ideas. Even though we were not successful and got annexed, uh, I think that uh, you know this kind of demonstrates how you go about. Uh, getting the uh, the achievement, especially just passing all those laws in the very early game, um, uh, I think is the the more more critical portion of this. Uh, and all those laws, of course, including and being very critical, uh, closing the borders so that you can get uh, as high a proportion of your population working on the gold as possible. We could just continue on as the USA and just be like, uh, just call it a victory, a moral victory. Except for um, it's not achievement eligible. We there's no Joshua Norton. Everything's Sad. Robert E. Lee's the president. This is terrible. And so we are going to call it a run. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, the, that bug is also just a very, very strange one as well. Where, um, okay, if the UK just wanted to continue out, we definitely would have enforced in that war. Which is unfortunate if the UK just wanted to keep slugging it out, but they wanted to capitulate. So here we are. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, very, very short run. <laughs> if you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, do the YouTube a little bit, and also have a good day.